welcome. Uh, I'm delighted to have uh, Geshe Tenga returning for teachings from the Sarah J Foundation close by in uh, El Cerrito. Um, I'm also delighted to have uh, Shire translating uh, from Guto uh, and uh, Richmond. So um, this is a very special teaching. Um, I feel that it's important that it comes uh, close by um, uh, Ishi Kendon's visit uh, because uh, this is true practical dharma. Fortunately, I had time to um, meet with Geshe before, and he's open to uh, discussion, question, and answer for the last hour, and um, very practical things. So I said, you know, we're not just talking about how we can be nice people, which we want to be, of course, correct? But how to deal with very difficult situations like what's going on in the Middle East, right? What's going on in Russia? How do we how do we deal with traumatic and really difficult events? So um, this is uh, really practice on the cushion and off the cushion, isn't it? So um, my own teacher, uh, Ru teacher, put so much emphasis on lojong. Um, so he said uh, the 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 higher tantras are so you get the basics, not you do the basics to get the higher tantras. So you, you're doing all the impairments, you're doing all the higher tantras, so you get the basic three uh, principal aspects of the path. And of course, Geshe is coming back in uh, two weeks, but maybe also in um, a future, uh, you know, three principal aspects of the path, so refuge. Um, bodhicitta and insight to emptiness, right? So uh, if we get to all those three, then uh, our peace and freedom is assured, right? So when we say higher level practices, um, uh, the higher level practices, as I've been taught, are so we get the truth, right? We get the basics. So I'm delighted that Ankeshla is here today. He will give a thorough background and um, maybe um, uh, you know, it's being recorded, correct? Okay, good. So, uh, please teach Dharma. <coughs> Thank you. You, Thank are you. Are you able to hear me? Yes. Hello, Kokoto. I'm going to go to the next First of all, a hearty greeting to all of you. Uh, <clears throat> you you're oh, yeah. able to hear, right? So I've been here once before to your center, Lion's Roar, uh, and I've again been invited, and I'm happy to be here again today to present the mind training. <clears throat> Before presenting the mind training, I'll introduce myself. Now, I myself began my studies at Sarah J in 1995. I was there studying the scriptures until 2018. But then my name is Gishi Tenge, and uh, my full name is Gishi Lozang Tenge. Ah, uh, 
in doing it <coughs> for 17 for 17 years I studied the the scriptures and then in addition to that there were an additional six years of study involved in the Geluk examinations so then it's something like 23 years of study uh, in the monastery <laughs> but then uh, in 2019, uh, I began a uh, one year of secret Mandrayana studies at Kutuk <laughs> This, I think mm. this would be okay. Mm. Sorry, can I... mm. Okay, yeah, thanks. Yeah, this one. And this one. This one. Yeah. And then, uh, I'm going to go to the Tashuan and now I'll begin with the mind training itself. Regarding the, the meaning of the mind trainings, we'll begin first with its reason, the reason for it, justifying it, and follow that by the introduction preliminary to it, and then we'll enter the training itself in the verses. Now, today, regarding the mind trainings, we will take a point of departure as the eight verses of mind training, the text itself. Uh, now, generally speaking, the mind training, thought transformation, all the teachings of the Buddha, the Bhattavacana, are mind trainings. The reason that it is so that the Padavachana is mind training is that the, the word of the Padda, both explicitly and implicitly in every case, is for the purpose of pacifying minds, and so all teachings of the Buddha are mind trainings. And so today in mind training, these mind trainings are particularly the Mahayana mind trainings. Mm. Then, a word then about the emergence of mind training itself. The roots of the lineage of practice of mind training originate in the two lineages of vast practice and profound view. Uh, 
in short, the lineage of profound view concerns the presentation of emptiness. In the lineage of extensive deeds, the methods for the development of the mind of awakening bodhicitta and great compassion. Regarding the two lineages, the lineage of extensive deeds originates with the Buddha, is passed to Maitreya in a lineage that is known as the lineage of extensive deeds. The lineage of profound view, too, originates with the Buddha Bhagavan, is inherited by Manjushri, and proceeds along the continuity of this lineage. These are the two root lineages. <coughs> That lineage of profound view passes through Manjushri to the illustrious Nagarjuna and on to Atisha. The lineage of extensive deeds passes on through illustrious Asanga and to Atisha as well. And then Atisha integrates the two root lineages. <laughs> the, the teacher from whom Atisha learned the mind trainings was Suvanadvipa. Suvanadvipa, the name given to the guru of that place. And this <laughs> A teacher had many disciples, instructed many disciples, but the oral instruction and the mind training were held among very few of those disciples, taught to very few of them, primary among them, Drum Tumba. <laughs> Atisha himself was from India and traveled to Tibet. Drum Tumba was Tibetan and preserved the mind training teachings in Tibet. <laughs> Through Drum Tomba, Sharawa, Chetawa. Though through Drum Tomba, the lineage of mind training was preserved among the author of the present text, Langri Tangba, and Sharawa, and Chekawa. Mind training was composed by Langri Tangpa Dorje Singe. In short, Langri Tangpa. Chikton, 
Alle Kanjis. La. Kanjis. So, ich habe es gesagt. Ah. Leute, ich habe es gesagt. 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 Leute, From the composition of this text to today, more than a thousand years have, have passed. This text we presently turn to as basis for our lesson. Now, before we get started with the verses of mind training, I will provide some background to them. Now, the, the, the purpose of mind training, why it is we would engage in mind training, to touch on this is important. Now all of us here gathered in the in this hall today and all of the beings in the world with their various backgrounds, their various cultures, the various shapes and sizes. They have in common the wish for contentment and the wish to alleviate their pain. With this as the common basis, the shared desire for contentment and the shared desire to alleviate all pain, we engage in mind training. Now, though we wish for contentment, we aren't able to achieve it for ourselves. Though we wish to alleviate sorrow and pain, we continuously experience just this, sorrow and pain. In our endeavor to find happiness, we, we make our undoing. And we, in our prayers and other practices, when we aren't engaging in mind training actually, we are not likely to be successful. Now there are stages individualized along the way in the training that is mind training. In the Mahayana mind training, before it is the Mahayana mind training, one begins in preliminaries that involve the reliance upon the spiritual teacher and progress through trainings of the small scope, middle scope, scope and great scope of the Dharma. The stages of the path begin indeed in proper reliance upon the spiritual mentor. In order to find liberation from sorrow, one relies upon a path that is indicated by the Kalyana Mitra, by the spiritual mentor. Lamtongi, Jege, and Korangi, and Yamsolongi, and Lamtik, 
The Kalyana Mitra, the spiritual mentor, from the practice the Kalyana Mitra. Kalyana Mitra, the spiritual mentor, based upon their very practice of the path, informs the disciple in the stages of the path of practice. And from thence on, there is for the disciple the emergence of realization, the instantiation of their practice. So it is said then that the very door of the path is the Kayana Mitra, the spiritual, spiritual mentor. Uh, we don't have sufficient time to allow me to describe this in more detail. Beginning in proper reliance upon the spiritual mentor who indicates the path of practice. From that indication of the path of practice, there must be the manifestation of progress along that path. This occurs through the precious human embodiment with its leisures and endowments. Leisures and endowments describe leisure that is time sufficient for the practice of the Dharma. Endowments, the endowment with conditions supported, supportive of the practice of the Dharma. Those leisures and endowments are 18 leisures and endowments. They're counted to be 18. We haven't the time to count them out, but mention them, we will, to say that the precious human body has its leisures and endowments that mustn't be squandered, they mustn't be wasted, they must be put to use from today forward. That would be one thing if the human endowment with its leisures and endowments, though hard to inherit, were long-lasting, but it isn't long-lasting. It is in every moment disintegrating and changing. This disintegration, this changingness of the human endowment, oh no. Uh, 
generally change uh, isn't so particularly descriptive. It is more so when each looks to their human body to find that it isn't permanent, it isn't stable. In the world with its some 8 billion people, it's however many billions of people, uh, it, we, can, we can say with assurance that very few of them live more than 100 years. And we don't say this to cause anxiety, we say this just to indicate the, the facts as they are. Now, if we, if we acknowledge this state of affairs, it is certain, 100% guaranteed that that, that clear-sightedness will be beneficial to us. Uh, now we, we wish to avoid suffering, yet it is continuous for us, and it is evident to us that we experience the suffering of change, we experience the suffering of pain. We see this everywhere about us. Uh, And even our pleasures themselves become the suffering of change. And it is so for us that we experience the suffering of change so long as our aggregates are the contaminated aggregates and the worldly beings aggregates are contaminated aggregates and the satisfaction that worldly beings know is not the ultimate in contentment. Therefore, for the elimination of sorrows, for liberation from the bondage of pain, so that there be one day lasting contentment, we begin our practice and continue it from today forward. Uh, now, why is it so? The basis for practice, that is the human endowment with its leisures and endowments, is not something that we will come to possess easily again and again. It is difficult to achieve in the first place. And now that we have got it at present, we must begin the practice now and continue it. Uh, 
थाटा दिल अपे खेचे बचाती और इस थाटा तेन देख तो ने दिले गुचो माता वाचे ने केवा शे केमा केवला अने के योना के सोबा मलम तन्ना थेगत समझे खपरेस गो दिले चो को रेस्ता थाटा के थाजो ते दिखा ने गोचो ने ने केवा केमा लाने रेवा के के थेले केवा संतो संतो ने रेवा केया छियो रेस and that the practice be unmistaken is critical and that it begin with this unique opportunity presented to us by the present human body but the present human body if it isn't used to engage in virtues then when one takes their next birth the course the course of events in that next life is determined by how the human body in the former life was put to use if no change was brought about with the basis of a human body and the person merely engaged in empty prayers and the like then there will be no effectual change and so it must be that with this precious human body one begins the actual practice that is the basis for assurance that one's fortunes improve ah tatse dekhe chebore lati ani keva chima na samma matu sege yo mare keva chima ji reba kya bala go dile choko tike che che yo re as ale det uh se dile se dile kare ha kontinu ya kala bora ha ha ani keva छिमा ने थे पाने के बाद छिमा ते सामो चीता थे नहीं थर पाता थमजी चीपे खोमो ची सामो तंगे ची ना थाते थो ते सामो दे नो चोचोड such concerns would inform a practice that necessarily begins with the present human body and this is critical tindi ni cha ani cheta nga cho chu lan do mundo se a de ani cheya ge cho te tipa chembo yin ba ta tindi ke che che ge yo ma res cho koro tipa chembo yin na zan no te tipa chembo tre la chu pa chi ko yo res ah it's it's got got some song ยังจะชัวร์ยังรู้จีนรู้จีอ่ะเนี่ยถ้าเราจะเซนเดนเนี่ยเนี่ยเราจะเกี่ยวกับเกี่ยวกับยินะเนี่ยเราจะดูสั
then the importance of the acknowledgement of death's inevitability, but the uncertainty regarding when death will come, and that at the time of death, death which is, which is certain, at that moment, the moment of death, all that is of any use and benefit at all are those virtuous karmas that one has collected, that are dormant in the mind, those that are the practices of the dharma that are virtuous, that determine courses of events, these have an influence after the moment of death. But any reputation one has had, any wealth one has garnered, all of these are lost to one and have no bearing at all. Uh, so then, from this basis of a human body and the roots of virtue that one may accumulate through it, there is hope in lives to come that again one will inherit a human body that is basis for virtuous action. Mm. The mind that is inclined primarily to events in one's future lives is a mind now inclined to the Dharma, in fact. Uh, then this is the, the beginning then, the recognition of the value of the fortunate rebirth. But it alone is not enough for no matter whether one has again inherited a fortunate rebirth, that fortunate rebirth is necessarily still involved in samsara. And so long as it is, then the experiences of samsara continue and repeat themselves. That which causes the mind its distress, karmas and kleshas, the karmas and mental afflictions, until they are thoroughly eliminated, that which results from them, pain, will be uninterrupted. But why is it that pain is continuous? Pain is continuous because the minds that cause it have yet to be discarded, uh, for the elimination of pain, prayers and the like are not sufficient. What is required is the cutting of the very root of pain. And so one must find what the root cause of that pain is. The root cause of pain are two, karma and afflictive minds. Mental afflictions, klesha, are identified as mental afflictions, klesha, insofar as they perturb the mind. Karmas are those actions that are caused by klesha, whatever the action, whatever the event caused by it. 
now, if one wishes for an end to suffering, then one must eliminate the cause of that suffering. Whether the cause of pain can be eliminated or not depends upon a correct understanding of the cause of that pain. If the view is correct regarding what has caused pain, then the pain with its cause may be eliminated. But so long as one misconstrues the cause of pain, one cannot bring an end to pain. Uh, now, reflection upon the mental afflictions, as one reflects upon them, one finds that they are, their cause is, their justification is insubstantial. There's no justification for them. For instance, in the case of anger, another person strikes us with a, with a stick. We become angry at the person, but this is a mistaken sort of response. And it's a confused response because when we're hit by another with a stick, it's the stick that hits us, it's the stick that causes, causes us pain. Yet we become angry at the person who wields the stick. But one might think, oh, how foolish to think one should be angry at the stick. It's the person who wields the stick that one should be angry at. The person who wields the stick is really the person responsible, but they too really can't be held responsible because they are under the sway of the mental afflictions, and they too are not always angry and brandishing sticks. And just as it might not be justifiable to be angry at the stick because it's wielded by the person brandishing it, so then it isn't correct to be angry at the person, for it is the mental afflictions that move them. <coughs> So when one thinks of anger, reflects on anger, one finds that anger is unjustified. So it is with anger then that anger is personally distressing and it causes us to harm others. And seeing that, then we see, we recognize that anger itself is not justified. So, 
ปาโรปลานิเตคงโดเลงโอเคเรสจินเซยังได้เยอะไปอีกนะคงโดชุกชุกเชี่ยวเชี่ยวไปอีกนะคนละคัพที่อยากไปเจอตุกมาเรสใ
to be a benefit to others is moved in the first place by the desire to personally be free of samsaric pain. Where that desire is intense, one is moved to be freed themselves from the bondage of pain, then that intense feeling, the intense wish, may be extrapolated. It is personal, but then may be extrapolated to all others, a recognition that they too wish to be liberated from their pain. Where the personal feeling, the desire for liberation from cyclic pain is intense, then it causes the extrapolation of the feeling to others, which is the very cause of compassion. That desire to liberate from pain extended to others is compassion. It is the basis for love. Without the intense, without first the intense personal desire, it wouldn't follow. <laughs> And so the Santideva says, in the way of the Bodhisattva, without in one's own mind a desire to be free from, from pain, how would it come to pass a desire and love for others, that they may be freed from their pain? So then this third step, that is the Mahayana mind training, that begins with, requires the desire for liberation from cyclic existence, and then is applied to all others, making it the Mahayana mind training. In the Mahayana mind training, there are two forms of mind training. That, that is the sevenfold cause and effect oral instruction, and the second, the exchange and equalization of self with others. Uh,天地,天地,天地,天地,天地,天地,天地,天地,天地,天地,天地,天地,天地,天地,天地,天地,天地,天地,天地,天地,天地,天地,天地,天地,天地,天地,天地,天地,天地,天地,天地,天地,
or Tinji Tata Titone Taco Res for the establishment of the equality of self and all others, one must acknowledge that just as one oneself wishes for contentment, all other sentient beings wish for com contentment too. And just as one oneself wishes all pains and sorrows to be alleviated, so too do all others. And this is the basis of our equality. Uh, and in the establishment of the equality of self and other through the practice of the establishment of the equality and equalization of self and others, it isn't merely seeing that suffering and desire to eliminate suffering, and that contentment and a, the desire to achieve contentment to be common, one must look at how one conceives of that. And when one recognizes the equality of self and others, one must realize it too. The notion of equalizing self and others is not the quality that is physical. It's not an exchange that is an exchange of the, the physical body. And it is not an exchange and equalization in terms of the mind either. It is instead the divestment from pathological self-love and the development of a mind that will cherish another. <laughs> Now, in short, at present, self, oneself, and others, between the two, one's preference and bias is inevitably for oneself, toward oneself. To imagine another as more valuable is impossible, but the transformation so that it is seen so, so that path pathological self-love is reduced, and when it is reduced, that there is the equalization of self and others, this is the equalization of self and others. How would it be possible to be unbiased toward oneself? It is possible by the power of reconditioning and developing new familiarity with a different outlook, such that one comes to resemble the, the Bhagavan, who through the force of intense consideration of the well-being of others, achieved a state 
very different from the ones that we experience now. The ordinary worldly experience caused by self-interest and continual pathological self-love is the very cause for the continued experience of samsara, for worldly beings. But the Buddha Bhagavan, by the force of consideration of the well-being of others, achieved Buddhahood, a state altogether different, and so it is possible, nevertheless. Shantideva, of this equalization and exchange of self and others, observes in the way of the Bodhisattva, the child, the childish, selfish, remain ensnared in samsara. The Buddha, considering the well-being of others, has achieved Buddhahood well before them. The Buddha achieved Buddhahood through the force of attention and concern for others. The childish, childish self-interest causes the others, the rest of us, to remain ensnared in samsara. Now, when the time comes to take a, a break, you indicate a good time to take a break. Uh, if, there, if, it, if you'd like for there to be a, a break for tea or something like that, you, you indicate the time that would be appropriate. Mm. Should we do that now? Sure. And, the, and when will we reconvene? Yeah, yeah. Okay. You'll make the time for the Q&A. If, if we dedicate more time to, to the question and answer, that's good. Mm.
I'll get started with the verses of mind training, but we won't complete them, and we'll resume them again in two weeks, and today we'll also leave a, a bit of time for Q&A, uh, uh, per our agreement with the uh, <coughs> director here. <coughs> Uh, now in short, in the Mahayana mind training, as I've said, uh, the, the basis is first the establishment of an equality between self and others, and then the possibility of the exchange of self and other. <clears throat> and then following this, our commitments and, and practices will go in into these. Hmm? Uh, ตาตาตาเยเนี่ยบาตาตาเยเจวะเตตังเกคอนโดรอบซาชุดซาวะยีตาเนตาตอนเนขาซามาตุเจเนลัมตุจูร์เซยาดีคาเรริจิเรเซ
taken up again contaminated aggregates, pain and suffering will be continuous and we must face it. This follows from having taken up the contaminated aggregates. It's nature, then, the natural course of events that we would face pain and misfortune. But to recognize that we are not alone in that, that all others too have this in common with us, that they meet with misfortune, recognizing this, then we would confront it, meet it head on, so that it isn't allowed to perturb us anymore. Now, I'm going to begin now the eight verses of mind training. There are eight verses here. I won't be able to finish them all. We'll merely make a start at it. Tani <laughs> The first verse, by thinking of all sentient beings as more precious than a wish-fulfilling jewel for accomplishing the highest aim, I will always hold them dear. I here is Kishilangri Tangpa himself, will always hold them dear. They are those precious sentient beings, all the others. That wish-fulfilling jewel, as precious as it is, others, those sentient beings, are still more precious. Now, to us today, we might speak of billions of dollars, no matter their value, the value of these untold number of sentient beings surpasses that, no matter how many billion we speak of. Uh, Others who are those Cynthian beings surpass the wish fulfilling gem and any number of billions of dollars of wealth in value. Because in this life, had we billions of dollars, it would be of some temporary use to find some satisfactions in this life, but later on in lives to come, it will be of no use at all, no matter the billions of dollars of wealth, even all the world's wealth combined, it's of no use later when one again takes birth and one w and then, but should one have an interest in liberation and the achievement of Buddhahood, that those liberation and the achievement of Buddhahood are possible by virtue of other sentient beings alone. No number of billions of dollars are of any use in the achievement of liberation and Buddhahood. Uh, 
the Buddha is known to be precious and likewise all sentient beings must be known to be precious and the reason they are is because whether one has in mind Buddhahood itself or liberation or, mer or merely food and clothing and recognition in this life each of these and every one of these is possible through others other sentient beings alone impossible were it not for them uh, that the Buddha, Bhagavan, and sentient beings are equal in their kindness, equal in value. That it is so is emphasized by Shanti Deva too. We would reflect on how it is that all that we consume, what we drink and what we eat and what we wear, everything that we depend on is available to us by virtue of the kindness of other sentient beings and the effort they have put into those things. And apart from their effort and their kindness, they wouldn't be available to us. Uh, this is the meaning then of the first verse in short then the second verse whenever i'm in the company of others i will regard myself as the lowest among all and from the depths of my heart cherish others as supreme whenever meaning wherever one has gone with whomever one is in the company of whoever it might be i i myself langri tangpa will regard myself as lowest among them always less than others and from the depths of my heart heart cherish others as supreme this isn't meant these are these are not mere words to the effect that others are supreme but from the depths of Langri Tangpa's heart, he means it so. Sik Tangpa ti kapso la ni shen semje em tak to ni ni ke pan zi ni yos zum bara wa. Tindi ni ba na chera ni yur gashe ta ni khonsa chik to pan ni ba tindi thong to ni chera chik ti so ge ni ti so la ni chu to ta me to pa tindi ka ni yung me to es la ba ina ni ya ka ni so me to ni che ni ka che ni yos na. And 
in the first verse, says, I will always hold them dear. Then one might ask, wherever you go, whomever you meet, will it always be so that even meeting a person who is difficult, it will be so that you will always cherish them wherever you go? And Geshe Langri Tampa replies, that, yes, it will be so for the reason that wherever I am, with whomever I am, I view myself as lowest among all. So I am never competitive with one who would be perceived as my equal, nor am I jealous of those who might be perceived as superior to me, and nor am I arrogant toward those who would be inferior to me, for I am always, in every case, lowest among all. Uh, Chirang the third verse then, in my every action, I will watch my mind, and the moment destructive emotions arise, I will confront them strongly and avert them, since they will hurt both me and others. In my every action, I will watch my mind. Asked, how, how would it be that you achieve this? How would it be that you confront mental afflictions? I do so at every moment, whether I'm in motion, I'm at rest, whatever I am engaged in, by being vigilant so that the moment the mental affliction arises, I do not allow myself to fall under its sway, but instead immediately meet it with its antidote. And so this is the advice then there, that the moment mental afflictions arise to apply their antidote. For if a mental affliction arises and then one suc succumbs to the mental affliction, for instance, anger, and the anger lasts for a moment, then it becomes more difficult to eliminate afterwards. So to immediately apply the antidote is meant here, uh, <laughs> ニョモナティデマレス。ニョモラカチ。ジュボチェワイナ。ソソノチャチェロチェロンドレス。ティデニザニョモチェタチェディネ。ニョモナ。ニボテネカティチャテペヘチェモレス。ペナコンドタボチ
with the arising of a, a mental of affliction, and then when it is allowed to, to remain, it only becomes more distressing, and so the need to avert it immediately. When the mental affliction, for instance, anger arises, one becomes perturbed, recognizes the disadvantage of anger, the need to apply antidotes. And so the preparation and readiness to the very moment the mental affliction arises, for instance, anger arises, to confront it with an antidote is emphasized. No? Should I, should we begin, should we conclude here or do one more verse? We'll be able to finish up either way. Now in a Q&A, there's no guarantee that my answer will address the, the, any given concern. There'll be, there'll be a, a variety of, of, of responses, but I'll certainly give uh, it my best effort. Questions? Yeah, Q&A. So, Dylan mm. yeah. so, will be passing. So, even though we have an excellent translator here, um, I know it's easiest to bring the question to a point. You know, so, you formulate your question and you make it succinct. That would help share a lot, because I know sometimes in America we go on a long explanation about our state of mind and then finally ask the question. So so that would help a lot, but now we've had time to think about things, right? So it'd be easy. And um, please please hold like this this closer, so then we can record it. How's that sound? Okay, so people have all gone to school, so we raise our hands. Um, how do the afflictions and misunderstandings and aggregates travel to the next life? Pombo. <coughs> Kandestinikewachimala <laughs> That <laughs> Said 
खेले गए दो तीन शिवाई ना शेपा मेटा ताया यो मारे फुम्बो मेटा तो सब फुम्बो मेटा ताया यो रहा था afflict perturb consciousness the mind itself the mental afflictions are are states of consciousness states of consciousness persist through transmigration consciousness cannot be the way a, a body a physical form can be cremated it isn't burned to ashes it persists in its form it isn't physical form it's it is consciousness itself if i myself now were to to die my conscious states would persist an in inter an in intermediate state and then persist and find new existence again in rebirth the physical aggregates are different they they are perishable in cremation ignorance or misunderstanding as a conscious state until it is abandoned thoroughly abandoned eliminated no differently from mental afflictions as co- as a conscious state persists in short consciousness and conscious states are not eliminated destroyed in a cremation but persist ah te ne yan chachi shuida ah ma so tada pena ame nga ne ma che to pugo manjar yo ra pugo manjar pugo manjar ti ge sem gi che pa ti na mi ke ti ko re es ti na mi ti de na mi ge ti ra na ma ti ge so ti pugo te ge तीचो छेरी ओ मारेस को थी की नमी कुरा रिंदा नमा सर शिपा चिंदो कुरेस ओ दिदे युबा इंचा अनि केवा नमा तिथिले च मा थुन मांडो वायना केवा छिमा थेगे पुगु थेगे अनि शिपा थेगे चोथे राग मारेस पे एना नाचो लोतो डबो चि न कोला साबो चि मेना लोतो युना मंदवा थे ना जी शिपा ले सर चिचो डो कुरे थे न सोक त थेसो गु चि कोर चो छेतो गु मारेस त ते चि लप्ता रो आउ रिपीट दिस अगेन with an example of a of a newborn born to a mother that newborn has for their conscious states principal cause not the body not their body in their previous incarnation but the continuity of clear awareness of consciousness itself that is the substantial cause of their continuity in the new infant state but with the same persisting clarity and awareness of consciousness itself this is the substantial cause for the awareness of that newborn just as a given crop germinates from its particular seed of the same kind so it is clarity and awareness a characteristic of consciousness and its consciousness that persists hi uh do you have advice oh sorry do you have advice on how to confront a mental affliction so overwhelming it causes you the loss of will to live 
Plus. Kalau nang suyi, ra. Kalau kalau nang wa suyi, ra. Hmm. Kalau nang suwa, kare re lam na. Susuki nyam nyomo chaku chaku tente kene susuki mutene sombo sombo de yagi debati tete la chukengi nyomo de tomen kandis chego Tapi nyomo de la tato hude nyomo de nono kondo de chaga yore tendo roa pe na so a kondo sadu so so teba chi tobia ke tendo kondo sadu yore te na kondo te he ni so so tsende ronso joya ta ani tsendi ge ni chi zamno tonto mandi pi ge o ge ni tsende la ni jolam ngi ba te ya ta ni tsendi chi Sosok rosok juga tidak yang terlihat wah, tetapi itu kontrol itu, tetapi tuan itu cerdik, ini sosok yang tata gaya ini pede, cara cembur ini macam, tuan itu pergi cembur ayah serawa, tanpa dia, ini, tetapi ini kontrol gila, tetapi ini kerana kontrol ni ni, kontrol ni ni tuan, ini sopi gaya, pion lah, ini janda cerdik, pergi cembur ayah serawa. Ini kongdo macam ni orang dalam ni tangki siapa najin cene, ini kongdo laptop cedi ni, ini ini temete wa, sendi macam ni macam cawang guru es, thela thela ni, ini paru pote, ini tau tau cing thong, ini tenje cedi kongdo sayang guru es, thela ni tu ini paru pote ya, ini tau mai pa, paru pote ya tevan dopa, soso ya. Tawan dopa nasi, paru paru tawan dopa. Sosok tengah minyak paru nasi, paru paru ane tengah minyak paru ini bagi. Lol, tinggal zaman cik tangguh ni awak ina. Ane rosok jaya tinggal gua maris. Tiada ane sosok beli deh deh. Deh deh, cak cembur ini bagi tanya tak kece cembur maris. Tadi gua beli deh deh ni tangge, hari gua tola, bunta mabo le, sabar maris ya deh. Ane hoti rendang deh, tak kece kau ya, tak kece cembur maris. Tadi tambah cilap dah. Of all mental afflictions, it is, I think, anger that is worst of all. And anger in the way things have panned out in events in one's life can become so intense that a person despairs and, and wishes for suicide. And <clears throat> It's in this sense, then, where we find the great importance of recognition, of the recognition of the human body in its immense value, that we see it as, as valuable as it is, is important, is critical. And then, too, that we see pitfalls of anger and advantages to tolerant patience, these two as exercises for the mind are critical as well. For as the verse says here, when anger arises, immediately we are distressed. Immediately there is distortion such that another becomes an enemy, though they are not an enemy at all. They are identical to us in their desire for contentment, their wish to avoid pain. They are just like us. They are not enemies at all, that they are like us. The recognition of the pitfalls of anger, the advantages of tolerance. These provide support when we meet with conditions that would situations that cause us to despair. Especially important is that we recognize the human body that we have as incredibly precious. That no matter how many billions of dollars you might have, still 
the human body is more valuable than any number of billions of dollars. To understand that, this is critical. Hi. Um, first, I want to thank you so much for explaining these trainings so well, and to the translator also for doing such an awesome job. Um, so my question is about the antidotes to um, the mental afflictions, for instance, anger. Um, you say to confront it immediately with the antidote. And by antidote, do you mean perhaps the opposite of anger, like meet anger with kindness? Well, <coughs> And especially the, even before anger arises, to be primed and ready to confront it. This too is important. Shamba. <laughs> It is love that it is the antidote and the opposite. Dopinichotelachapata.Sosogin,Dopinichotelachapata.Ami,Chigla,Patachin,Kora,Riskin,Chikta,Chigni,Tonatilio,Maris,Tate,Sosogin,Pamachin,Yugre,Pamate,T
then they are all alike in that respect, and then we may prepare the way to only feel affectionate love toward them, and then with that affectionate love, we will not experience anger toward them. Tola and if I were to put that again, I would like this, that the notion of friendship and adversaries is made up by each of us by the intensity of our self-love, by the intensity of that pathology of self-love, we invent a group that we favor and another that we are averse toward. In actuality, they are the same. The notion of a friend is dependent upon that of an adversary and vice versa. They are relative and they're not absolute. But moreover, by the force of pathological self-love, those who serve one, one is fond of, and then one develops an aversion to those who do, do not gratify one in the same way. But one would realize that all of these ostensible foes, adversaries, all of these ostensible friends, over many countless lifetimes, have already been both friend and foe, and there's no absolute justification for any anger toward them. I experience a lot of despair when I see sentient beings suffering that I have worked to develop a lot of compassion for and love for. And that despair keeps me from being able to move forward in a positive manner. Is there a good antidote I might apply to this to keep me moving along <laughs> in my pursuits? Pinto <laughs> 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 Go 
<coughs> this is a, a good question, and uh, this this happens to us uh, that uh, confronted with the 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 tremendous pain experienced by others, we find it intolerable, unbearable. That feeling can be incapacitating. That the the despair. This this happens, but at the same time, when the the dedication to the welfare of others is very intense. It will be so intense that no despair would be an obstacle to it. And why, why would it be so? Because in any event, one can say, now in this present situation, I'm unable to directly be of any help. Something more must be needed. I must bring together different conditions so that I may be able to assist now. So I must exercise the mind of awakening bodhicitta. I must exchange and equalize myself with others. And I will do this. And my practice will be to do just this. And in a situation of unbearable hardship, when one thinks in this way then, though directly one isn't able to be of help as they would, nevertheless, indirectly, one is accumulating the strength and ability to be able to be of service and assistance to others in their hardships. Then this very thought process is what I would recommend. And it, whether or not this directly answers your question, I don't know. And if it doesn't, you can... Uh, you can raise the question again. And then I am get to do to show is guys in a chunky tongue. It's just the big way I get your shit. It is the Toraki Maris. And a she is in jet to my natural at your sheet. Tell it your sheet. She was also to my natural thing as I'm not on telling your sheet. She was lips on my inner. Tell it your uncle and the tongue will not take it. Yeah, day on your rest. Tell it in your rest. In by inza, cobble and not to get your sheet. Shira yumba la tombo ranti na nyo tombo kudua. Chira anin tombo na ranti na yoba ina pete ta za chimbo ta khe chimbo reis. Joshi te kongi yo reis. Te la te ni so so ni ki koba le tanto ke lo ta nyin jun ta. Ani te la te ni e mi shamba nyin ke te ronji ke lebe reis. Te pe apun doos chira. Te ni yona. And I would respond the second time in this way regarding the feeling of despair. that it, when you are confronted by the myriad forms that, that pain and suffering takes and sentient beings experiencing of those myriad pains, and when it causes you despair, that it does cause you despair is connected to the very impulse that a person must have, a revulsion toward the pain and suffering of cyclic existence where there is a revulsion toward this state of affairs, that is the beginning of the, the mind that wishes for liberation from samsara, which will gradually extract one and others from samsara. But the basis for that despair when confronted by the suffering of others is a recognition and awareness of the pain that one oneself experiences. And that pain is the very beginning of the renunciation that becomes the cause for what comes later, the development of the mind of awakening, the development of great love and compassion. So that despair <coughs> is valuable in that sense. <laughs> Is 
So do I understand it correctly that the primary uh, reason why sentient beings are precious to us is because they give rise to our destructive emotions and an opportunity to practice, or are there other um, reasons why they should be considered precious to us? ทางเงี้ยอริตอลาชิงบาอริตอลาลาวเกยอนันดาทีเกเซดีเกเนจิงาซูเกพิงจิงคอบิยอจิตะตบตบเกเรมาตุเซดเดลกาเบเกนิเ
any fame, any recognition that we come to have, any status that is given to us, it is relative to others. There's no fame and there's no status in complete isolation and alone. So this is true in this life, that all that we might experience of value is value relative to others. Then again, later on in lives to come, <coughs> moral discipline that achieves for us the possibility of a human rebirth is that ethical discipline of, of observing or restraining oneself from the ten non-virtuous paths of action. One forsakes violence and stealing. This is a path of ethical discipline made possible by others. One does not murder others. One does not steal from others. This is possible, this ethical discipline, by virtue of other sentient beings, and so their value. And the achievement of liberation is possible because of other sentient beings alone. And the bodhisattva charya, the bodhisattva practices themselves, these are possible by the virtue of the presence of others and impossible without others. For these reasons, we recognize others to be as valuable as they are. Uh, Lo, there's a danger that, that uh, one might misunderstand uh, what I mean uh, when I say many billions of dollars in any amount of wealth, it's of no benefit. It, this, in this life, certainly, when, when uh, we meet with physical pain, there are solutions that are, are material. Uh, there are conditions that can improve uh, living conditions and uh, alleviate physical pain. But when we have as our objective improvements in lives to come and ultimately liberation, indispensable then is this awareness and recognition of the kindness of other sentient beings. And they provide for us the means for these achievements and any amount of wealth, billions of dollars, cannot. And billions of dollars cannot correct an afflicted mind are no solution to mental distress. You cannot buy the ideal medicine for that. <clears throat> Any other questions? Tse de luton ko se lap ke cha jie tu ene tse de june sam no tanya yo mare se tindi lap ke yo mare se ene tse di ge te ji ge tonda la ene tse di ge ni penjo ta te zo ene nang chou ni zo yo re se yu na ya so so se ba mi ji ba ji Chi 
那。<音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音> Sacrifices in one's life so that they may be content with less is a method presented in the Buddha Dharma, and at the same time, the Buddha Dharma recognizes <coughs> that that wealth and resources is requ is required in and provides for some necessities. And generally, we, we depend upon the infra infrastructure that's, that's material in our human society. But in the Pata Dharma, emphasized is our fixation in how we might transform or improve upon our fixations so that we might find contentment, and so that we do depend upon an infrastructure that is shared and material, this is acknowledged, but that there's a possibility for a transformation of uh, how we apprehend our world, this too is emphasized in the Buddha Dharma. Uh, ちくたたすんすんげ。で、だんだんだけ、レビューはです。え、てつ、あの、セバマテラテのセバマキパソグよな。え、そうそう、さんのと、と、ちょ、のちょで、ジョバタに、パカヤレマトペ、そうそう、
and a, a world as distressing as it is, the external environment. I'm not saying that, that wealth and, and everything must be eliminated, but I'm emphasizing that all this distressing in the world, they'll only be continuous in, in increasing innovation and transformation of that ex, exter, in that external world, but it will never be corrected. The, our mode of, our approach to apprehending that world so that we might be more contented by the force of our own mental transformation. This is what I mean to, to emphasize. Not that, that wealth and all of this must be entirely eliminated or something like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. ตัดทวารเลนตะโบคาริชงนะตาตาฮะโคมาสวนนี่ตะงารังกิโมนี่ขันทุกทุกจิชุยคือดาวจิเนี่ยนี่เซวมาจาบายนะชุมาเจมาน
mental afflictions will remain afflictions. Between that awareness of reality as it is, misunderstanding and incorrect assumptions obscure the correct understanding of reality as it is. Now, I've said that pathological self-love causes pain and distress for us. So does the, misassum the, the misguided assumption that there is an intrinsically existent self. That the virtues of this presentation of the Mahayana Buddha Dharma lead to the Buddha Dharma lasting a long time, that it bring peace to the world where there's violent conflict, where there's famine and, the, and where there's drought, and that it provide protection to those who are vulnerable. To this end, we may dedicate the virtue. Tene na diring te chusu ke dela ke ta ne nga lo chung ke ti che a ko kam na ma te la ka ti che es shua ta ni ke chur la ke pe pe to po ya bo chur son te so la ni ka ti che shua ta ni cha ma nya bu chen ke cha ma la ni pe ka bo pe chung os ti che na i'm very gratified and grateful for the opportunity to present the mahayana mind training teachings so thank you to the center for inviting me Thank you, all of you who have come. Thank you. Thank you to the translator as well. <laughs> thank you. I'd like to make a few remarks, then we're going to do closing prayers. Uh, are we doing Catalan? Oh, so there's also we have the opportunity to um, uh, present an offering, kata line, we call it. So, um, uh, Patty can coordinate that, this opportunity to greet and hello and make an offering. Um, so that's really nice that we have that opportunity. So, but uh, I hope that people take their notes with them and then look at them again. <laughs> and, you know, please take the um, eight verses with you, and I'll look at them again, right? So um, have it in a place that is uh, accessible and clean and uh, high, right? So like that. So two weeks is the 28th, correct? So I will be back. Mm. Oh, yes. So tomorrow, uh, I'm here for recovery group at 9, and then open meditation at 10, and then uh, service at 11 to 12.30, then group lunch, and then Kala Chakra, right? Then maybe some more after that, we'll see. So lots of Dharma opportunities, agreed? Yeah. So I'm, does uh, does Patty know everybody who's been here, or does Patty write wrote down? Yeah. So um, we we need to record that. So on your notes too, um, you want to write down the date and where it is. So that's very important. So that uh, just with any Dharma teaching, not just. Uh, in impairment, you go on this day, at this place, with these people, from this teacher, I really took this to heart. On this day, at this place, with this people, with this teacher, it entered my mind stream. So it isn't just casual, right? We're friendly, this is, so Geshe's part of our monastery, Sergei, so this is family, right? But this is really important. It's also eclipsed today, right? So this day, this place, this people, this teacher, I took this teaching to heart. Then, then it's uh, fully has a full foundation, right? And then we make a pledge, like I'm going to have the eight verses. 
uh, enter my mind stream by repeatedly contemplating them, right? This is not Western education that you're not going to like hear it once and then you move on to the next course. <laughs> so we, we read and then contemplate, read and contemplate until uh, it, it has fully become part of our mind stream. Do you agree? Yeah, good. So uh, we should do like dedication. So you have to back up just a little bit there from our electronic ohms. We're having there is some. There it is. Okay. Ready? Dedication. Due to the merits of these virtuous actions, may I quickly attain the state of a Guru Buddha and lead all living beings without exception into that enlightened state. May the supreme jewel bodhicitta that has not arisen arise and grow, and may that which has arisen not diminish but increase more and more. In the land encircled by snow mountains, you are the source of all happiness and good. All powerful Chenrezig, Tenzin Gatso, please remain until samsara ends. May the teachings of the Buddha flourish, and may the upholders of the teachings remain forever. May all migrators achieve happiness, and may they fulfill all their temporary and ultimate goals. Lo Song, magical display of the deep awareness of all the victorious ones, merciful giver of a stream of profound and vast instructions to the fortunate migrators, please remain always unperishing, unchanging, unfading. Avalokiteshvara, great treasure of objectless compassion, Manjushri, master of flawless wisdom, Vajrapani, destroyer of the entire hosts of Maras. Sung Kappa, crown jewel of the snowy land sages. Lo Sang Drakpa, I make request at your holy feet. So now we should arrange, so we need to stand up quickly and make, so we can, but start, uh, mix, mix them up, please. There you go. Man pay Wang Po Chong Pe Yang Kong Pen Ke Pe Su Chen Song Kappa Lo Song Drag Pe Go Get the So Adam Mig Me Te Me Te Chen Chen Rezi
Oh, uh-huh. 